Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. <yay. laughs> okay, so yeah, I can't read this. We're gonna zoom in. Oh no, it's not responsive. So we need to fix that. They didn't test any of this. I've actually, I've, I've sent these people CSS saying, please fix this. Use the CSS for it. Yeah, we will. No, they don't. Um, so a screen reader. So. Yeah, there's a separate mobile site. Why not just make this one responsive so it renders correctly on the mobile interface? We could do that. There is actually a separate mobile site. It's also not very good. Nine, two, nine, two. Please make Jeremy window. At the station, postcode ETC. Insertion of a text. Van Mulvage for wheel. At the station, postcode ETC. Quiet. Music. So here's a screen reader that basically is going to read out whatever it can find on that site. Uh, what it does, though, you can have this nice little heading menu and it gives you all the headings on the page. So this is why it's important to have decent semantic HTML because it shows you, okay, here are all these semantic elements, form controls, uh, links, and you can quickly navigate to it. So if you say, okay, if I go, hey, where do you want to go? I end up there and I'm right where I want to be. But of course, this is, a screen reader can do this. But uh, there's a microphone here. Uh, I should have probably been using this microphone all along. <laughs> Didn't really realize, nobody told me. <laughs> anyway, um, train of thought. For a visual user, you have no real way to quickly skip to uh, headings. Um, you can use landmarks such as header and main and footer and quickly navigate through those, but that's still not ideal. Normally, you would use skip links for keyboard users in this case. But I'm digressing. I was. Um, I was going to talk about actual accessibility testing. So we can have manual testing, and uh, this is totally going off the rails. Um, manual testing. Uh, no, this, hey, is this the wrong? Hang on a second. Ah, yes, mechanized. So in Perl, what we can do is we can use um, dub, dub, dub mechanized, for instance. Anyone who use that? Yeah, it's great. So there's test, 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 dub, 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 mechanized. You can use it very easily to crawl HTML, request the page, and everything. So I made this quick web page. It says, uh, you know, it's a basic website. It says, hello, um, uh, hello, LPW, UTF-8, basic viewport, some styles, some JavaScript. There's a header, glorious leader, a button, and a section. Now, the button has an area expanded equals false, which means to assistive technology, this can expand something, it's currently not expanded, and it also controls another element, which in this case is called glorious leader. Um, what that does, I'll show you, get to it. So yeah, my glorious leader, you can click the button, behold, there's my kitty. <clears throat> of course you can't click it again because I haven't implemented that. Now if you wanted to test that via mechanize, we could. So I've written some quick uh, mechanize code. Uh, so, strictures, version 2, test mode, test of the, the mechanized and HTML lint. So, this does, it says, okay, I, uh, <coughs> I have a linter where it says, check, give me any errors that are not only structure. You can also say, just give me structural errors. But, and I, I added some plugin because the original linter doesn't understand HTML5. It throws all sorts of warnings that it doesn't understand a bunch of attributes. So, <coughs> I'm saying, okay, give me a new tester mechanized. Uh, Autolint using this linter I created, get the site I host locally, uh, check that the title is correct, and then stop testing. So that's fairly trivial. Okay, so I get some errors. It says, oh yeah, linting errors. It doesn't know what this source set attribute is. That is valid HTML5. It tells me that linter is out of date and probably needs a pull request. It says, okay, this image, it doesn't have height and width. And it also says, okay, it doesn't have alt. That's important. Any image will always have an alt text, even if it's empty, because empty says to a screen reader or any assistive technology, this isn't relevant. But if you did give it an alt, it should be descriptive, like a picture of our glorious leader, Mark Keating. So also non-visual users get context of what is going on on the page. So the problem with this is that you can test the dynamic behavior that I scripted. So that button is a little event handler saying, okay, now show this, put this class on the thing and show the element. I can't test that because I don't have access to dynamic DOM because it just downloads the HTML. Now, 
the nice thing we have though, we have selenium. Anyone use selenium? Great. So we can use selenium to uh, control the browser uh, and talk to the browser and say, okay, uh, actually use dynamic uh, uh, testing. So I've written a little script for that. Mm -hmm. Test selenium. Okay, there's more Selenium Chrome, which means I have a standalone Chrome that I want to control via Selenium. Uh, back in the day, you would have to have a standalone server running Selenium, and then it would have to control Chrome. Nowadays, you don't have to do that anymore. You can use a remote driver. I'm saying here's my binary for that Chrome driver. Um, start it up with some settings, well, which are where the binary is. Get this over page, get the title, check that's the correct title. Then I can also check, okay, I have an image section, uh, find the element that has an ideal glorious leader, uh, find an element that has uh, an image of Mark, and get the attributes, check that it has the correct alternative text, uh, check that it's by default hidden, check that the button that reveals, as, um, let's see, by default is not expanded, so we expect that the review button down here by default is not expanded, and when we click it, it should become expanded, the image should be shown, and when you click it again, it should be hidden again and expand it to go back to false. Fairly trivial. Is this, is this clear, by the way? Is this making yeah, sense? Yes, okay. Yeah. So, <coughs> I should be able to... I did something wrong. Okay. Oh, I can't see my... This is the Okay. So, you can see... Did you see my Chrome fire down at the bottom? Um, it gives me a bunch of errors. <coughs> So let's go a bit up. So, page is correct title, but it says, okay, the image doesn't have alternative text. Fail test. Hidden by default, review button controls the reveal by association. Uh, the button is not expanded. Uh, when the button is clicked, the review button expands, the glorious leader is shown, uh, but when you click again, it doesn't toggle back because I haven't implemented that. But now you can test that your behavior of this height show is correct. So this is what we can at least do on the Pro side. So we can use Mechanize to test basic structure. We can use Selenium uh, to uh, do all the dynamic stuff. But there's nothing that prevents you from just doing everything in Selenium and not using uh, Mechanize. It, it, it's more a matter of speed. If you just want to have quick sanity checks of structure, then uh, linters like that are, are a good option. So. What else can we do? Um, I'm going to go to the browser now because I've basically done my, my, my little pro thing. So in the browser, we also have a bunch of validators. Um, for instance, there's the W3 validator. It's uh, well, made by W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. Let me uh, quickly resize my browser. The World Wide Web Consortium. And uh, you can give it a site, it checks its doc type and runs a bunch of tests. I gave it the W3C website itself to check and it says, yeah, hey, no problems. Oh, that's great. This is the old XHTML, HTML4 validator. It doesn't really understand any of the newer stuff. If you have a newer doc type, you get automatically sent to this one, which is knows HTML5, all the, the, the newer stuff, and it also validates well. But asking a W3 to validate the W3 is asking the smart kid to do the problem on the board. It's just, it's just not fair. So, uh, I like to test with a bit heavier stuff. I give this. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lynx Cars. This is a British um, car leasing website. And I've broken tools on this thing. Like, I try some online tool, give it Lynx Cars, and some just never came back up. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I heard people did this. I didn't do this. I didn't break anything. So, anyway, um, this, is, this is a kind of interesting site. Um, I, I organized a uh, inclusive design accessibility meetup group and we had a couple of speakers talk about how to design with people with uh, a certain type of autism in mind and this, this is the worst you can do. So, but she does very well, this type of artistic chaos is her brand and she does very well. Um, she's actually noticed that I've been using this in my talks and wonders why Dutch people are talking about it. So, um, I can run this through the validator. Oh, there's also Andrew.net, which is great. This is a Norwegian website where you can buy stuff online. And it's, it's kind of terrible. So did you know there's also, you can scroll down, but there's also stuff to the right. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I, I've also uh, bro broken a fair amount of things on that. Anyway, um, let's run Lynx cars through the validator. 
So <coughs> Lean Stars has its duct type XHTML. And so it gets shitloads of errors because she doesn't have, she uses XHTML but doesn't have her JavaScript encoded as C data, which triggers the validator. So these are kind of all red herrings because browsers ignore that because XHTML is kind of dead, nobody cares anymore. So we're better off using the modern validator. Links cars, suddenly, I'm still to tell it what the encoding is because it really comes late in the site, but. Um, it gives me relevant errors. There's straight A tags. There is uh, uh, attributes that aren't allowed to be used. Images, images without all alternative text, etc. If you look in the console log, there's actually I think there's a warning from somebody saying, "Help! She's got me chained to the basement building this site." <laughs> um, what else? There, th th these are these. Uh, okay, I, I, I also ran into the more modern new HTML checker. You also get a bunch of things. Um, now, also the problem with these validators is that you only get your static HTML. You can't test dynamic behavior. I use Fastmail as a mail client, Perl shop. Yay, Fastmail! Um, really fast. So the interface is entirely dynamic. I, I, if I test it, which is what I did here, I get uh, like two errors. Like, I know that's bullshit because I've looked through the code. So, uh, if I then copy the generated HTML out of my Chrome inspector, then I actually get a bunch of relevant errors. But still, you can't you can test that. It's useless. You get, a, you get a whole bunch of errors here of invalid attributes and everything, but it's not relevant because I can't test this. I would need a, a, a dynamic test. So, in the browser, stuff you can do is, for instance, using um, Wave. Uh, and I have a link to it in my slide later, but this is mostly just going to be an interactive part of the, the talk. Wave is a tool and also an online validator that you can use to test this site. So let's say there's CPAN. I think they just had a decent upgrade to V1 or something. So Wave, I'm sitting here in my browser. It's this little W, and I can click it, and my Wave pops up. <coughs> so there's a, a, a little... Uh, summary of whatever it found, and I can go through all these, uh, these, these items by part. So I get 16 errors. Okay, so I can click a little flag here. I can also keyboard through this. It's keyboard accessible, of course, but I can click the flag and say, okay, so there's a bunch of images without alternative text. I can click the problem, and it shows me, oh, this is where the problem is. So there's a booking.com that has no, <coughs> nothing saying, oh, this is a, a logo of booking.com, which is as a, as a non-visual user, you just see image, and usually you get read out the image file name, which is, which is useless. So this is also one of those tools where you can quickly see, hey, what is the problem here? How can I fix it? Um, I can also click the problem here, and it'll tell me, oh, there's a linked image missing with uh, missing alternative text. I can click a link here that takes me to more information. And um, well, it's, it's just overall very useful. Um, I can run it on links cards. I have this preloaded because it takes a good minute to chuck through it. Now this doesn't really make it any clearer though. <laughs> so, it has lots of alt alt missing and uh, 92 errors. So I can actually turn styles off. And now I can see a bit more what's going on. This is cat. <laughs> There's actually also lots of sounds in autoplay YouTube videos. Like, uh, um, I can also check for contrast problems. So it tells me, oh, well, you have a contrast problem here, and a contrast problem here, and a contrast problem here. And uh, anyway, there, there are problems. Um, that's that's way. Another validator we have is Tenon. Tenon.io, one of my clients actually. Uh, so I can give you know metacpen.org. Do it. Right. 25 issues. You scroll through them. Mm. Okay, image missing alt, image missing alt, image missing alt. Mm. So, okay, fine. <coughs> More of these are Power Mapper does a similar thing. I think I ran Meta CPAP through it. You get a whole dashboard, lots of information. Also, usability uh, uh, tests. So, you can say, okay, uh, I have usability errors, and I can look at those, but they're not really all that relevant. Um, right, uh, there is another one called, hang on a second, X, which is made by DQ, and 
it creates a panel in your Chrome inspector. And it says, okay, that's pretty obvious what this is for. It says, analyze this page. Sure, why not? This is an open source library, very cool. Uh, it's basically just JavaScript, it gets injected, and it's just going to tell you a bunch of errors, and you can, okay, color contrast, you can click it, uh, which, which, how many violations are there, there are three, you can go through them, you can find the element, and just say, okay, fix this, this is how you fix it. Uh, here are the current colors, very nice. Um, the problem with that, with, with any of these, is, um, is that we're lazy and we're still not automating anything because it's <laughs> just been doing a whole bunch of manual stuff. We want APIs. So in this case, the W3 validator has an API. Oh, sorry, let me, uh, let me full screen this one. The W3 validator has an API. You can give it, pass it a check. Uh, parameter and a output equals JSON. It just says, okay, here's the URL you tested, here's all the messages you got, here are your problems. Bam, integrate into Grunt, good. Now suddenly you, your, your Grunt or Gulp task runner or NPM scripts or whatever JavaScript monstrosity you use to <laughs> test this stuff, you can suddenly automate. And hey, that's interesting. Wave also has an API. This fits so JSON. Uh, Tenon basically is an API that just happens to have a front end. It also spits out JSON. So if I go back to my uh, Tenon example, I scroll all the way down, I get a whole bunch of JavaScript output, and it also tells me, okay, I have a bunch of errors. Um, you can go through them. So there's, there is an existing Grunt plugin for this, which you can just use, okay, run it through Tenon. Tell me if there were any errors and which where the profile, uh, the report link is. So you get all this nice, easy information. Uh, Wave does that, but it's paid. Ten is also paid if you want to use the API, but you can use the, their online checkers for free. There's a bunch of more paid tools that I won't go into. Now, X is interesting because X is open source. With Selenium, you can use it in your in your grunt. Uh, 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 you can actually use it in your um, testing projects. So if you're using Karma, you can uh, you can use X. It's it's really very useful and it's open, so anyone can contribute. Uh, most of these other tools also have integrators, so that's not specific. <coughs> but DQ is the only one I'm showing right now that's really open. Um, so that's when it comes to APIs. Another useful API is the readability score. So there are a bunch of tests that, a bunch of algorithms that I always forget the name of because they're difficult names to remember. But given a, a corpus of text, they tell you this used a lot of big words, this used a lot of hard to pronounce words, this was didn't use a lot of paragraphs, this in, in overall, let's say you're working for some sort of governmental organization, you're having lots of information out there, you can run these quick checks to say, hey, this text might be hard to understand. If you work with people with a learning disability or with people who are lowly lettered, and there are more of those than you would think, it is important that you can do these quick checks. So the readability score does that. Um, and I wish I could just kind of give it a quick site to check, but I can never think of a good one. Uh, what's a good, what, what, what site shall we give it? With text on the Pro Foundation? Uh, Prolodark. If it works, of course it never works. Broken? Oh no, I've yeah, done it too much. much. <laughs> I wonder how to check that. Incognito window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try that. <clears throat> Ah, they hate me. Uh, okay, oh, they did. Okay, so they checked. 
And so here, Flash, Kincaid, Cunning, Fogg, Coleman, Liao Index. I mean, you can be really smart if you memorize all these. Like, well, according to the Coleman Liao Index, our readability and IQ manager for what? Well, average grade level is a seven. What does that mean? Yeah. Sorry. What does that mean? That it, that at a school level of, of, of grade seven, this is this is kind of how this how this is comprehensible. Sorry. So what's grade seven mean? Thirteen year old. I don't know these. I, I think this is American, actually. It's a good question. I haven't really thought about that. So <laughs> think about the readability, the readability scores. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a fair point. Although I do think that one, if you use this, you should, I should know how it works. That's, that's my mistake. Really. Um, anyway, these people also have an API, so you can quickly run a piece of text through it. And yeah, it's, it's the part of the, the understandable in accessibility. Does it also test the colors for Daltonians? The color blinds? Uh, Red and green? No, no, it, it doesn't because it's more about understanding and uh, color blind red and green would be more of a, a perceiving uh, part. So all these contrast uh, uh, checks, there are tools that also uh, check for color blindness uh, and various other, other types of um, of, of, of visual uh, disabilities. So, so let's say we have C band. Uh, it's this interesting tool called No Coffee. It's a Chrome plugin. And you can visualize, vi simulate all these vision things. So let's say uh, the common one, uh, Rotnopia. So it should change these colors and I don't really see a big difference. Uh, I don't know. No, I gotta have a more visual. Uh, uh, <coughs> what's a good one? Oh, I just tried links. No links, links. No, no. I've tried that. My browser was slow to a crawl. I was fucking just trying to. Uh, I should have had a good site ready. That's my mistake. Uh, I wonder if I can try something like Reddit. I hope there's nothing weird on Reddit today. Okay. So. Tritonopia. Okay. So. Text color changes. Uh, these are basically all SVG filters that are overlaid on the page. So you can you can simulate that, those sorts of deficiencies. You can also have um, something like uh, macular degeneration. So this creates this blur in the middle of the page. So you might think, well, that's not interesting. But people with, with this deficiency, what will they do when they try to read your content? They will zoom in. So basically, this is a good one to check. OK, if I have this thing here. Can people still read it when they zoom in? Well, because this site isn't re responsive very much, <coughs> really. But it is an interesting tool. Uh, I wish the guy would open source it. I've been trying to talk to him, but he doesn't change uh, one. You can have uh, large spots and floaters, and these, there's these floaters on the page. I'm trying to find one. There should be a couple. Ah, here's one. See it? They actually move a little bit. There's actually, uh, there's also um, ghostings, uh, cloudiness, and like, okay, this is suddenly really hard to read, and you, you have to zoom in. This is kind of how my right eye sees. The left eye is, is, is without it, but the right eye, I really have to zoom in on stuff to have a decent idea of what I'm looking at. Like Twitter, 200% kind of becomes possible. Um, while we're talking about interesting tools in the browser, uh, an interesting one is this one. It's called the Contrast Ratio Zebra Contrast Contrast Ratio <coughs> Checker. And what this gives you is you can click anywhere on the page where there's text, and it tells you um, we're at 16 pixels small. We validate according to the WCAG accessibility specifications. Triple A level, which is like the best level, but it's really hard to attain. Uh, <coughs> good contrast ratio, we are for grounded by ground colors. There's a little glitch in it. I think I feel it see it as a glitch, we can keep clicking. I don't know why, but fine. Uh, it is it is a nice little tool to do a quick check. If you don't use Chrome or you don't want to use this tool, then you can also use something called the color contrast analyzer, which is made by the Shallow Group. I have a link in my slides later. Uh, where you can give it a background color, so you can use the little dropper and uh, give it a foreground color. So you can also, also use the little dropper. Mm -hmm. 
and it tells you, okay, this passes all the WCAG levels. And they can also actually play with the slider here. Say, okay, when does this no longer pass? Well, it's always going to pass, really. But uh, it becomes interesting when my background color is changing. Because, hey, suddenly it stops passing. So you can play with this, and you can uh, very easily from here then also get the right color code and, uh, and, and play with, okay, which, which colors would we still, would, could we use to still be uh, uh, compliant with <coughs> the required specifications. Um, what else, what else? So, it's the, another nice tool that's out there, let me just reload this page to get all the weird stuff out there. It's, uh, yeah, one thing I've noticed that once I have this you no know, coffee on and a tap, it doesn't go away anymore. So, oh God, now it's everything. <laughs> <laughs> Reset. I, I had a little, uh, when I, I've given this talk before, and I had a little, <coughs> little vibrator, like it would do this, and I couldn't turn it on, and I had to give my talk. So I said, okay, people, just ignore it, just, just this a bit. <laughs> um, what else? Ah, there's the, the visual area bookmarklet, which means that if you use area attributes and area roles, then you can click that little bookmarklet to show, okay, which ones are you using? So I can click it and it says, okay, you have some area things here. Uh, there's a nav here with a role of navigation and you can also uh, hover over things and it says, okay, the accessible name this link is about, and there's no accessible description, it means that there is no described by area attribute. Don't worry about not understanding all these area attributes, that's, that's, a, that's a, a subject for a whole different talk, that's an in-depth accessibility talk. I'd love to give one at, at some point, but not now. Um, another nice one is Tote Wamawai, because Hans, and it's made by Khan Academy. And it gives you this little, uh, if you click this little uh, 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 sunglass, and you click it, and it tells you, okay, uh, gives you a little menu. You can click contrast, and it tells you on the page, and I don't know why the resolution on this projector is so low, but it tells you, okay, here are some uh, uh, contrast problems. For instance, these here are low, and you might want to look into that. It tells you the landmarks you're using. So in this case, I would have to see, ah, oh, yes, okay. This thing is hiding it. So it says, okay, there's a dialogue here somewhere, and there's navigation. Um, that is a very nice one. I'm going way too fast. So you guys are gonna go have to go for coffee, aren't you? Let me go back to my slides here. Okay, so after mechanize, at some point you also want to go test the style, because you can have all the CSS you want, but it's uh, who of you work 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 with uh, a lot of uh, uh, CSS on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, now a lot of a lot of times you see in CSS people set their root HTML font size, for instance, to a certain amount of pixels. And what that does, it overrides the user style sheet. So in general, you want to set that font size to 100%. So whenever the user says, my font size that I like has this type of basic uh, size, then your own styles just adhere to that. And then your media queries that you use and all your relevant uh, 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 styles will just use uh, RAMs, EMs uh, for all their, uh, their positioning and scaling. That also means that when you zoom into a site and your media queries are all relatively based, for instance, on the travel side, they didn't. But if I zoom in on a site that has a relative media crease, it will just change into its responsive views as I'm zooming into the page. So I can get, th that's the whole point of media crease, not just for, for mobile and tablet, it's when I zoom in, how do I make the content work in such a way that it's still perceivable and workable? So there aren't many tools that check for that that I've found. There is a linter called CSS Lint. It's on GitHub, you can add your own rules. So, from what I've seen, there is no rule currently that check, checks for that sort of stuff. There are some tools online that check to see whether you are using absolute indicators for this sort of stuff, like uh, setting your root font size to a certain uh, size. But I haven't seen tools that do much more than that. Um, 
So it, it's hard to test style like that. We can test behavior like I've shown with Selenium with all these browser tools. Uh, we have validators. Here are a bunch of links for later for people if they want to show uh, all these tools I showed. Oh, there's the tray readability tool. I haven't shown that. Anyone wants to see that? No? Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> uh, hang on, I gotta quickly. Uh, because I don't think I have it installed here yet. <laughs> indices again and I honestly don't know enough about this myself but it is it is something you can just use in incorporation with your content writers depends on, on what, what kind of teams you're working so that's that quick little tool it's called the tray readability tool as you could all see <coughs> all right <clears throat> that little TPG contrast analyzer that I showed you know coffee API <coughs> So I want to talk a bit about the future of these tools, because they keep getting better, they keep getting better. There used to be this old Bobby tool. Anyone know Bobby? This is, this is English Bobby. Ooh, yeah. And it, you would have these, these things, they would say, Bobby approved. And Bobby's dead now, you know, he's, he doesn't help us anymore. But there was also this thing called Cynthia Says. This really old tool, <coughs> also from around the time of Bobby or Cynthia Says. And I've, gave, I've given Cynthia Says, like here, just this side linked cars. And it took like, forever, like 15 minutes, to test links cars. But it did come back with a bunch of results. So to look at where the web is going, I've looked at webdevdata.org, which is what webdevdata does is they <coughs> download the top thousand Alexa sites, just the HTML, so no dynamic content, and they store that. And you can crawl it. So hey, why not use Pro? So I've gone through a couple of archives and what you notice is that starting in 2013, the anyway, projector, we, can, we can't see those, but the, the usage of sectioning elements like nav section, header, footer, site, semantic increase is getting better and better, especially sections because there are more than one on a page usually. Uh, this is an improvement. This means we can also start start checking for those types of things because they're just used more and more. Uh, same goes for the use of roles. Like we all use roles right now on our elements. Like okay, um, like a div of role equals button. Who here does that? You have a div, you give your role a button. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to do it. So we see an increase in that, which is a good thing. Um, we also see an increase in the use of these array attributes, which means people are trying to make the web more accessible, which is awesome. Um, more time-based media element uses, so lots more videos. See how video is going up and audio is going a bit up. Do you know why video is going up so much? You know why? Because flash that! Alright. Ah yes, I love how it kind of burns them. So, flash is <coughs> going away, but still, we're, these tools are getting better and better, but I want tools that tell me this is really, really wrong and I shouldn't be doing it. Here's a button, which is natively focusable. Uh, however, I'm giving it a custom tab index of minus one, which means I think it's not focusable, but I want to make it focusable. It is a type of button, which is fine. You can repeat that, because all the versions of IE don't, they, they say it's a submit by default, so sometimes you want to type it's a button. It's got a real label of current page, but then a roll of link, Default roll of buttons, button. Um, <coughs> but they're trying to make an anchor with a span in it, and then and then a real label that says current page, but the span means getting started, so the accessible name will still be current page. So any screen reader will say there's a button, current page, and this and any visual user will see getting started. So uh, 
not many tools will tell me this is really, really bad, but this is, a, this is real code, by the way, it's just found out in the wild. Uh, but I, I'd like tools to get better at that. Until then, <laughs> we're still going to meet humans. So I was on, there was a Stack Overflow a couple of days ago, was a thread where a woman was saying, uh, well, it's not relevant, the person was saying, um, I'm using NVDA, which is a screen reader, uh, open source screen reader, very cool, made by uh, two blind people. Source code has no new lines or spaces. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's really hard to get there. I wanted to know how something works. Uh, okay, so but predifiers do great things. Uh, anyway, NVDA is really cool, and she was saying I have this problem. I have a div with a roll of button, with a div in it with a roll of button, <laughs> and it's not doing the right thing. I'm trying to build this menu and. <coughs> tools should, should, so the validator, normal validator wants to catch that because hey, it's a div and a div, that's fine, but the button and the button, that's not relevant, that, that's not, not um, valid. So I'd like tools to be able to, to, to catch that better, and until then we're just going to need a lot of humans. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I'd like tools to be able to, to understand that they're just not very good at yet. Um, Sorry about this. I was going to have my other tablet, but no power. Uh, I'd like to get better uh, better video accessibility. Like, okay, if a video, did you give it a transcript? Does it have captions? Because video should have captions if, if there's anything in it, you know? Um, if I have, let's say I have a responsive design that is geared towards a viewport of like maybe 700 pixels wide, like that's a small device. Um, if I have that though, I would like to have analysis that says, hey, here's this small, here's, here's this media query targeting a, f a small viewport, but your buttons are still this really tiny font because there you haven't got specific styling to put your controls in a good way, uh, to, to render them like they can easily be read, easily be used, that sort of, that sort of stuff. The problem with this is, is be because you start doing that, you enter the land of heuristics. So you're starting to talk about, okay, well maybe the tool, let's say I have a web page, there's no header, no footer, no aside, shitloads of divs. Should my tool tell me, hey, you, you might want to get that checked out because this should probably be at least a header in the page. But, you know, who, who, are, who am I to say that? Hey, there are some tools that say, you have a navbar with a role of navigation, but you don't have to do that because the native role of a nav is role navigation but Internet Explorer 8 doesn't know that. So if I have these tools, what I think will happen is that they become more like linters, like JSLint, like CSSLint. They will say, hey, here's a warning saying, you should, you should probably fix that, but I should be able to say, but I'm supporting legacy browsers in my project. Don't worry about it. I know what I'm doing. Well, I, I like to think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so. Um, same goes for, uh, I don't want you to worry about me not being responsive because I have a custom mobile website even though I should have a responsive website. Uh, I, I think that, that that is the way this is going to go. Let's say I run my, my page through a validator in my grunt project and I get a shitload of warnings back, like 20 different warnings saying image no alt text, image no alt text. Like, yeah, but after one, I know I have a problem. Just tell me there's a warning. Some images don't have alt text. Don't give me the whole list. Just give me a quick substitute. If I run in for Bose mode, then I want to see all these different types of warnings. And this is kind of this kind of stuff I'm struggling with as I'm working on Tenon and we're trying to create tools that don't just do checkbox accessibility, but try to work with you as a, as a developer. Like, hey, what are you trying to build? What's it supposed to do? How's it supposed to work? Um, and that, that's just, yeah, it's, I'm just kind of rubber ducking at this point because it's just, it's just yeah. What else did I have for you guys? Uh, should get HTML? Yeah, I've been over that. Uh, I want to ask you guys a question. <coughs> and uh, say you're building a website, <coughs> and I have a heading like an H1, which is fine, and I have like 500 words in it. Should my tool tell me that maybe there's a problem? I, th I think it, yeah, I think it should. 
I mean, why would a heading have 500 words in it? That, that's probably a paragraph that I might have mislabeled. The heading maybe is 10 words, maybe two. Like this, this, this. Use headings, by the way. It's good. Uh, but it, it's the same as, okay, you have this bunch of text here. And, but you have no heading anywhere, maybe you should have a heading. It is, it is very difficult to say, okay, user, you probably don't know what you're doing, please check this out. Uh, I want to say, hey, you have a link here and it has hover styling, but you don't have focus styling. What's up with that? But that means if I tap through it, I can't see that same nice uh, uh, attention to it that I get when I hover over it. That's also hard to test from browser, so you need to test it based on the uh, on, on non-browser tools. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you think uh, I'm? Well, I'm still a little bit old school. I I can't follow all, up okay. all the attributes now HTML has for all these uh, possible possibilities. And I'm wondering if classical template systems can still catch up and are maintainable in the sense that you're always. In the, in the new state of accessibility. You know what I mean? It, it's still possible to use something like Template Toolkit and keep it up to date with all this, or do you have to program the HTML now? Uh, that really because there are template systems which are kind of code, <laughs> embedded code, which create all the text. Like CGI had something like this to create the HTML. You know what I mean? Yeah, th that is fine, because your HTML is just rendered server side, right? Yeah, that, that's fine. As long as it's semantic, and as long as you know images of alt use proper semantic elements like heading, footer, all that sort of stuff, header, footer, um, and then it's all fine. That your links have properly describing text, um, and you you style it responsibly. That's great. Accessibility becomes more difficult if you have dynamic DOM, so you're changing content around. Uh, I, uh, JavaScript and accessibility are no, no opposing forces. JavaScript can really aid accessibility by adding uh, information towards non-visual users or uh, users that, that consume your content in a, in a different way than just vision <coughs> and mouse. So as soon as you start doing dynamic stuff like expand collapse or uh, replace content, then then you start to have to think about using a re attribute to say, hey, this part of the DOM changes depending on this content. Because it's all about communicating that same visual change towards a non visual user. That's all it's about. And uh, that, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's just hard to get. It's really hard to get a tool to tell you, hey, you have a button here that hides and shows some content. But you don't announce that using any non-visual attributes, so array attributes like saying uh, expand or collapse. You're not doing that, but I see you're doing it visually. That's really hard to test. You start to have, have you have to analyze event handlers and all that sort of stuff. So that's a point where humans are still going to have to check that because the time it would take to automate such a thing, I don't know. You're talking about testing. I'm talking about the creation. That I use the tools which created already in the right way. Semantically. Uh, well, then you start to talk about pattern libraries. And then you, you have these components that you create, that you maybe create on a, right on the back end and they generate the right HTML for you. But that's something, that's actually something, you bring up a nice point. That's something that we don't see enough in our development tools. Like good accessibility isn't built in our, in, in our tools. If I'm using Vim, I'd like my Vim to tell me, hey, you're just, you're writing HTML, but you are not, uh, giving the correct attributes I expect here to this element, you're violating the spec. So, <coughs> they're, they're, it's getting better and better, like uh, there's a wireframing application called Sketch, and it has plugins that check, hey, is my contrast that I'm using here valid? So you can really, while you're developing, know that you're uh, uh, conforming to spec. But what you're saying that, okay, can we have these predefined things, like I want to have an accordion that hides and shows, can, can these CMS just do that already? Well, yeah, the, the Can't you run a linter in the background constantly? Emacs can. Yeah, you, you can lint. Yeah, but from, from the IDE. But yeah, that, that really depends on what you're trying to test and if it's, if it's testable. Because if, 
let's say my, my, my silly example of the button that hides and shows. I could just have the button that hides and shows. Then if I analyze it, it will say, yeah, sure, that's fine. Because the, the heuristics that would say, well, but this thing is actually hiding and showing that thing, current, current ways to test, you would have to do strong diffing on the generated DOM to see what a thing did. The, 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 the work it would take to have that sort of heuristics, you might as well just use a human because it's just not practical. And, and the, the way to get that right from the start is to know what you're doing in the first place, like it always is. But the testing is more, in the, the, this sort of testing is more, hey, catch, catch my problems. Make sure, I'm still, make sure I don't regress. It's, it's mostly just about regression. The, 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 the little CSS I did, did that break contrast? The little new component I did, did that break the HTML spec? Am I, am I done? Okay, okay. You've got five minutes to uh, we're, we've practically gone into questions. So, uh, anything else for questions as far as I know? So, I'll look to you so we can get to Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Right. Thank you. Any questions? Other than that? <laughs> no? We're good?